trainers, as uh, Terry uh, commented earlier, otherwise known as Tractor View, which uh, he's got a pretty impressive uh, resume here. And I, I'll pick out a couple of things. And I, we had dinner last night, and I just I can't imagine how he does all this stuff. But he is he does own his own uh, Century 21 brokerage here in uh, in Drumheller. Uh, his average between 80 and 120 sales ends per year. He operates a 2,000 acre farm, 102 year old family farm, grain farm, active in the whole thing, as I said, he, he blogs from his tractor. He's also the current president of the South Central Alberta Real Estate Association, has a B, uh, Bachelor of Physical Ed for Physical Education from the University of Alberta, and does endurance mountain bike racing competitively. Techno geek, social media advocate, and blogger on Rob Heller Homes and Tractor View, please welcome Gary Chambers. So I'm new to this whole thing, and normally I don't even need a mic in front of me to speak, so I'm, you know, if my tone goes high, I'm low, I'll just realize I'm kind of green at this. But uh, I'm here to talk a bit about personality branding, and lifestyle branding, and niche marketing online. And I want to, um, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, personal branding. And it kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier here, where you have to realize, for myself, I am who I am. And there's nobody else out there that can duplicate that. And at the end of the day, when it comes to your business models, everything else can be duplicated but your personality. So what you have to realize is that everyone says to me, well, what does that have to do with selling real estate? And, and in this day and age, in 2011, it has everything to do with selling real estate. Um, we all know how social marketing or social media has changed the world we live in, and I completely agree with that. But if you can't relate to your customers or potential clients coming in to meet you online, it doesn't matter whether you're in the online space or you're in a social room like this, if you can't relate to people, you're not going to succeed in selling real estate regardless. Uh, it's just the mediums that are changing. Uh, this isn't really a new concept to, to any of you out there. I'm sure all of you have joined the Rotary Clubs, you've joined service clubs, uh, you've gone out and put yourself out in social settings, and, and really that action in itself is, is you taking on the assumption that your personality is so unique that people you meet or that you connect with at those events or those meetings are going to think you're intriguing enough to do future business with you. And whether or not we admit it or not, that's, that's why we a lot of times get involved with a lot of this type of stuff, is to engage with people and we know that hopefully if we can connect with them, they're going to deal with us in the future. Um, all of us are successful salespeople or we wouldn't be involved or we wouldn't be coming to these meetings. And there's really an aura uh, amongst everyone who's successful in sales that people inherently trust and follow. And, and social media has just allowed us a platform um, to convey that message. The problem that we're all having right now in social media is conveying that message online. Uh, we, we seem to be very comfortable in a room like this, and you know, as I travel across North America meeting realtors, uh, I have to say, by and large, we're the most social people I know in business. Um, so the issue we're having is conveying our social attitudes online. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit, and that's sort of where I go into personality branding, because there is a you do have to have a consistency to your message. I'm going to discuss, discuss lifestyle branding and niche marketing shortly, but I kind of want to come to a point or to how I came to the realization that personality branding mattered. Uh, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I live in a small community, about 8,000 people in rural Alberta, and I realized that I'm not really promoting a lifestyle. Like, the, the major employer in town is a corrections facility. So, you know, I'm not really saying move to drum. We're a great town. The guys only leave once in a while and we usually catch them. So, really what I'm trying to do is actually, you know, attract people to me based on my personality. And I've been successful in creating sort of two personalities um, online. And those two personalities are Drum Heller Homes and Tractor View. And initially, Drumheller Homes was the facts, the market stats, the community events, the local expert. Um, and I just spewed that stuff out in the first days of my blog. It was just all about, you know, I couldn't wait to get my hands on the latest market report and pound it out into a blog format. Tractor View, on the other hand, 
uh, was my views on the world as I see it as a father, as a farmer, as a cyclist, um, as a board president, kind of as an everyday guy who sort of lives by a work hard, play hard attitude. And, you know, when after a little while, what personality do you think actually attracted the most attention? It was Tractor View. And the key to personality branding is really about the message. And for me, it's about creating an understanding about why my personality and my passion towards everything I take on, including selling houses, works. And I think that's a message that all of you have to take on, is your personality and, and those features of it that you're trying to convey to the public. Um, some of my clients really only care about the market stats and the, and the results, you know, just sell my house, I don't care how you do it. Um, but, you know, a growing trend of them is wanting to know a little bit more. Uh, the reality is there always has to be a common theme to your personality. And mine's a little bit crazy because I'm actually trying to create a common theme between two personalities. Um, but for me, that common theme was work ethic, my attention to details, and the passion towards what I, what I do in every aspect of my life. And if you can demonstrate how your personality traits are part of your value proposition in selling homes, people will hire you. There's no doubt about it. Um, so of course, you know where I'm going with this. How did I convey that message to people coming to my town or the people in my town? Well, I conveyed it in my blog. Uh, the blog really is the hub of the social network. We've all talked about this quite a bit. Um, it's the meat and potatoes of your personality. Uh, the side dishes really are the Twitters, the Facebooks, and the, and the mediums that you use to support your message. Um, I can't really tell you how to brand yourself. I don't know all of you. Uh, but I can give you some tips as far as, you know, how you might want to take a look at it to start with, or what I did, is I took a, and made a list of the personality traits that made me a great agent. And I listed those all out. And then I made a list of the personality traits that make me an interesting person. And I listed those out. And then I took a few of the mediums that I thought I could use to convey that message. Um, so another topic with the messages, you know, people often say, what do you write about? Well, I just tell people, what do you talk about normally in social settings that people find interesting? That's a good place to start. If, you, if you're talking about nothing and people just walk away from you at a dinner party, don't write about that. <laughs> Nobody cares. So, um, you know, some of that message might be market stats. Some of that message might be uh, market conditions. Um, but you have to be more than that in 2011. You actually have to be a human being who's at home playing for hours Lego with your kids or maybe babysitting your grandchildren and then take those events and those frustrations and those successes and document them online through the different mediums. Social media is really, and social marketing has really put our personalities and our jobs and our life into a fishbowl and there's really nothing you can do about that except use the same confidence you use in typical social settings uh, to attract clients online. Uh, if your message is best conveyed in a written form, start a blog if it's best in person. Maybe grab a video camera and, and experiment with videoing it. Um, but keep in mind the message in the medium does have to be your own views. I have so many people come up and say, well, or I've heard, you know, I mean, I heard it as a career meetings in Ottawa last week, and, and uh, one of the members on the bus says, well, you know, I got my son or daughter taking care of social media. And, and it made me think, you know, would you send your son or daughter to an event like this for you? Would you send your son or daughter to a conference? Your, your message has to be genuine, your views and your opinions. Uh, I think that's enough of the personality. I'll briefly touch on, on the niche marketing. Uh, niche marketing is really just looking at your community, seeing how you fit into it, and more importantly, um, how you want your business to fit into it. So here I've made some examples of, of it in my small town. Uh, niche marketing is really a broad term, sort of best understood with examples. Uh, I'll start with my own business. I'm really not warm and fuzzy in how I sell homes. I'm just, I'm just not. Uh, I know this is a niche of people I don't appeal to. Uh, I kind of appeal to people who want an aggressive, uh, results-driven realtor who gives an opinion, no BS. Um, I not, I realized that a couple of years ago, and that worked for me. So I identified well with an agricultural community and an oil field community that really didn't have time for warm and fuzzy. They just want in, they want out, they want uh, the, the stats, they want the results. And initially those people were drawn to Drumheller Homes as a professional. Uh, however, over the past couple of years, social media has changed a little bit of that message. And now people are becoming more generally interested in Drumheller Homes, 
um, knowledge, but also the farmer, the cyclist, um, you know, the, the family guy. They're, they're kind of generally more interested in both messages. So I realized I needed a platform to present that, and hence is why I built Tractor View. And Tractor View really was just taking my views on the world along with some of the hard stats and combining them into a more complete picture of myself. Uh, another niche, like I was saying, that the warm and fuzzy crowd wasn't me. I couldn't, I couldn't convey a message genuinely to the warm and fuzzy crowd. So, but I knew there was a niche there in my market, so what I did is I went out and hired an assistant who could fill that niche. And my assistant's name is Kim, she's a mother of three, all over <coughs> the age of eight years old. She's, you know, her posts, if you go on my journal at home, her posts are on the daycares and the babysitting and, and, you know, the things in the community that I couldn't genuinely, I mean, I barely get to my kids' Christmas concerts on time. So, you know, the reality is I knew that I needed that medium. Uh, Kim filled that role for me. And people will see through your message online if it's not sincerely and it's not something that you would normally say in a social setting. So I think it's really important with your messages to, to kind of realize that. Um, the last part of it just being the lifestyle branding. And lifestyle branding really has uh, received a lot of attention over the last uh, year, and maybe two years. Uh, it encompasses the same principles as personality branding, but it's on a broader scale. Uh, in creating a marketing plan, some of you might choose to focus on lifestyle branding um, within a community. I don't do a lot of it because the reality is, in, my community doesn't really have a conducive lifestyle that I'm trying to promote as much. Uh, one of the best lifestyle branders I know is a fellow up in Canmore. He, his name's Richard Greaves. He lives and breathes the Canmore Rocky Mountain lifestyle. His blogs are full of bike trail reports and bear spottings and coffee shop talk. And, and he's living that lifestyle. And Canmore is a community that definitely, if you have a lakefront property or you're marketing in a recreational area, lifestyle branding is certainly a message that can be conveyed. And I'm always envious of agents that have those type of communities that they can market to. Um, don't get me wrong, I mean, I do try to, try to post what's great about my community, what I love about working and doing business in Durham Heller. Um, however, I have to be realistic that in my little community, not many people are just going to up and move there for any other reason than work. So it's important that if my lifestyle message is just kind of saying what's going on in town, what's happening, what kind of community events are going on, but I know that I can't, I'm not branding to draw people to move to my town for the leisure activity. Uh, kind of in summary, I guess, uh, what I would say is that if we can imagine a day not that far away where everybody has blogs, they all have Twitter, they all have Facebook, they have all of social media platforms and marketing plans, um, a, much, a day much like today with websites. Our value is not in being everything to everybody. Our value is providing some transparency in being a realtor and a person. In doing that, you'll actually attract the type of people you want to work with. And I think it's really important that as soon as you start attracting the people that you can relate to and you can relate to them, your job becomes a whole lot easier. Um, you know, I, I just think if you take that blank, of, of the three personalities in the community, your lifestyle, and your personality, uh, there's no way you won't win in selling real estate.